Hi, Paw Nation. This is Dr. Marty Becker of America's Veterinarian. I'm here with Gutter, and I understand you have some questions for us. Well, one of the things about obesity in pets is so much of it is based on the breed. You don't see fat salukis and whippets and boxers, but you do see fat, sorry here, Gutter, beagles, bassets, corgis, dachshunds, and Labrador retrievers. So, so much is based on the breed type that you have, but well, think about dogs. There is no bikini season in dogs. There is no, you know, gutter here doesn't have to get into last year's pair of pants. There's no stick thin dog models on, on Animal Planet. And dogs, uh, you know, they'll happily dig their own grave with their food bowl. So it's up to the pet owner to keep their pet towards their ideal body weight. And if we look at gutter here, he shows all the signs of obesity. First of all, when you look at his ribs, you should be able to feel his ribs under just a light layer of fat and there's too much fat here. If we look at gutter on profile, you should see a tucked abdomen. It should look more like a wasp, but instead it's just a large cylinder here. And if we do an overhead shot from above, you should see an indentation at the waist. It should look somewhat like an hourglass. When I'm looking down here at gutter, it's just like a large tube. So, you know, gutter here needs to lose probably about 10 to 15 pounds to get back close to his ideal body weight. Well, it causes a lot of the same problems you see in humans. You have an increased risk of type 2 diabetes, joint problems, heart problems, increased blood pressure, respiratory problems, skin problems, and also an increased risk of cancer. So it's really important that we get them you know, close to their ideal body weight. That's about what the pet weighed at, at one year of age as a young adult. And you don't have to get all the weight off. Like for Gutter here, it needs to lose 10 to 15 pounds, but even if we lost five to seven pounds, it would make a dramatic difference in his health. You'd notice him rising to his feet quicker. You notice him having more activity. Notice him sleeping better, uh, sleeping better at night, and just an overall better attitude. Well, there's two things you want to do. It's, it's usually, typically, less food in a pet's bowl and more miles on their feet. And you want to get a pet panting, tired every day. And again, to determine exactly what food is best to put in their bowl, you know, you want to go to uh, you know, the Certified Nutrition Program at Petco, where you can go in there and they can help you determine, you know, go through a thoughtful process of all these factors of a pet, the breed, the age, the activity level, have the sensitive skin or sensitive stomach to determine exactly what kind of food is best to feed each dog and each cat. And that's something that's probably going to change about five times in its lifetime. Well, the breeds we see obese is like here. As you can see, this beagle is definitely obese. You see it in beagles, bassets, cockers, corgis, dachshunds, Labrador retrievers. You don't see it in, in boxers and whippets and salukis. And it's just really important to look at, at everything for a pet. What is the breed? What is the age? How, what is the activity level to determine what kind of food is best to feed a pet? Well, right from the start, you want to make sure that you precisely measure out how much food you feed a pet. Never feed a pet free choice. And also, besides just what you, what you feed a pet is, is, uh, is how much you feed and how often you feed. If you take the precise amounts that you're going to feed a pet every day and you split it into multiple portions, they'll actually lose more weight. And so right from the start, it's much easier to keep them close to their ideal body weight than it is to let them get obese and then try to reverse the process. Absolutely. You know, while little, you know, pudgy pooches and fat cats are funny in cartoons, in real life as a practicing veterinarian, we see the multitude of health problems that they have. And too many times we equate food with love and we want to give excessive treats. Treats should never be more than 10% of the total calorie intake that a pet has every day. And, and so you want to do more things like play. Like when you take dogs that are working dogs that are used to detect mold or accelerants or peanuts or bomb sniffing dogs or even cancer sniffing dogs, what they get for a treat is play. So more than always giving treats, just give your dog more activity and, and they'll definitely benefit from that. Well, really, it depends on both. You know, I, I grew up on a farm and a ranch where, you know, guard dogs uh, were, they were, had a utilitarian role. They guarded, guarded stuff, they herded cattle, they retrieved ducks. You know, the, the cats were mousers, and now guard dogs have become lard dogs, and mousers have become moochers. So it's really an individual thing, and it's really important just to really measure how much food that you feed and also get more activity. So, 
You really want a dog panting tired every day and you want to do activities with cats to keep them more active as well. Oh.